Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back and we are going to be breaking down uh, the bets for the first round uh, Thursday's games. We'll do one again for Friday and then I'll probably do one for the entire weekend. Um, I have a little parlay going over over here. We'll go over that later. Um, but we'll go over the odds currently. So Villanova Radford, um, Villanova's minus 23 and a half, a uh, little bit high. Um, I wish there was a money line of like minus 2000 or something like that. Um, could add it to my parlay, but this I'm kind of considering, uh, but it's not a lock in my parlay, but, uh, I think Villanova wins comfortably. It's just a matter of if 23 and a half is just a little bit too much to cover, um, the one in 16 games have been getting a little bit closer and a little bit closer as the years have gone on. So I'm slightly worried about that. Uh, moving on to Alabama and Virginia Tech. Uh, uh, one, these odds are on Bet DSI. Um, also looked at the odds on Bovada, and they tend to be generally, they're roughly the same. So um, wherever you bet should be close to this. So Virginia Tech, Alabama. I have a strong lean Virginia Tech, but I don't think I want to throw it in my parlay. I just don't think I want to risk Colin Sexton getting extremely hot and uh, knocking uh, <laughs> knocking my parlay out of orbit. Uh, so I'll probably avoid it in my parlay. But Virginia Tech, minus 1.5, minus 110, and then minus 125 on the money line. Probably just go ahead and take them minus 110 at minus 1.5. If they win by one, you're just extremely unlucky. Um, Oklahoma and Rhode Island. I do like Oklahoma as a plus 115 underdog, but also not going to have that in my parlay. And I just don't trust Oklahoma enough to put actual real-life dollars on them. Uh, but them at plus 115 is, is a pretty good value. Moving on, Duke and Iona. Duke minus 21. Again, just like Villanova, it's a high total. Not exactly in love with it. Um... But I, I have, I have, I, I'm less concerned with it than I am Villanova. Um, Jay Wright tends to be a little less. I, I mean, he'll take his foot off the gas a little bit more than Chashevsky, uh, and so uh, I, I'm still kind of torn on those. I'm actually going to make the swap here, play Kansas at minus 14, and then we'll make an adjustment later in the parlay. But I like Kansas against Penn. It's really close spread. Penn's probably the best 16 seed we've seen in quite some time. Uh, but I, I just don't think, I don't think they're beating Devontae Graham. Um, and so I, I really do like Kansas. To, I, I think Kansas just whales them. Um, I will buy points um, in a parlay. So you'll see that. Uh, NC State and Seton Hall. Um, I do like Angel Delgado and Seton Hall to get it done. I would probably take the minus 140 over the minus 2.5, um, but that that's not bad odds there. This is kind of a surprising one for me. Houston, uh, minus 4, minus 110 against San Diego State. Really close spread. If you went off of uh, the betting odds spread-wise, uh, this would be one of the upsets you would pick. Um, I think Rob Gray and Houston gets it done, so I will be taking them. I will be betting this. I'm going to buy points on it. Um, probably should just take the money line in the, um, in a parlay like this, but I, I'm taking a minus four, minus 110, uh, with points bought. So Michigan, Montana, it's minus 11 to Michigan, a little bit higher than I would like, um, Possibly consider just taking the minus 700, but I think Michigan um, shows up perfectly fine. Weeks off of rest, you gave John Beeline plenty of time to prepare. He got a week to prepare the troops just for the NCAA tournament in general, and then he got a week to prepare for Montana. So I think Beeline will have Michigan ready to go uh, against Montana. Loyola, Chicago, and F Miami, it is only a one-and-a-half point spread. Uh, heavy lean. Even though I picked Loyola Chicago in my bracket and I don't have enough confidence Miami to bet them, a heavy lean for me betting on Miami money line minus 125. Um, I, I just really like Miami. Those That's just a really good odds value, I think. Miami is the better team. Um, we just think Loyola, uh, Loyola Chicago pulls off the upset. Uh, moving on to Wright State in Tennessee. I'm going to take the minus 900. I think instead of instead of uh, instead of the points, I think I'm gonna just take the the money line with Tennessee. 
uh, kind of a stingy, uh, if, if you don't want to, like, have to risk $9 to win one, um, probably stay away from this, because I, I don't like the, my, you know, there's going to be some games tomorrow that are close, the favorites will probably win, uh, but it'll be close, um, so I'm just going to kind of X that off, ignore it, um, let's see. There's something else I want. Okay. Anyway, moving on. Florida, minus five and a half. I like that against St. Bonaventure. Um, I really like Florida. This might get canceled out with the addition to Kansas into here. Um, just simply because this is one that I could see Florida. You know, they are, if Florida's ice cold, it's kind of GG. Uh, good night, Florida. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure I want to risk a parlay of this size on Florida winning, but I probably will. Um, I have a lot invested. Uh, like I said in some of my other my other videos, I really do like Chris Gioza, one of my favorite college players ever. Um, so I, it's, it's a tough one for me, but I'll probably end up leaving it in the parlay. So Texas Tech, minus 800, uh, minus 11. People giving Stephen F. Austin a lot of love, and they're – minimally scaring me um you guys know i really like texas tech in the tournament uh and so i probably should take the minus 11 and buy some points but i don't know i'm feeling a little bit scared so i'm, I'm sticking with the minus 800 kentucky davidson you know i loved davidson in my bracket mostly because if they get hot from three i think they can beat kentucky uh I do like the odds value here on Kentucky. You can buy it down to three and a half. Um, I probably should include it in my parlay. Uh, it really does bump it. Uh, but I don't know. I actually think Davidson has a legit shot. Uh, but Kentucky's length should bother them on the three-point line. Um, it's a tough one for me uh, on that one. We'll look at the parlay and then go from there. Uh, Arizona minus nine, minus 475 on the money line. Love Arizona. You guys know, I don't think Buffalo is stopping DeAndre Ayton or Alonzo Trier. So, uh, heavy lean to Arizona minus nine, uh, with points bought for, um, points bought for the parlay. So moving on, Ohio State and South Dakota. I have a strong lean on Ohio State. I think they win. Um, South Dakota State's a trendy, popular uh, upset pick, but I think um, Kata Bates, Diop, and uh, Ohio State get it done. So they're in the parlay at minus 375. I like that straight up bet at minus 375. And then Gonzaga against UNC Greensboro. Um, like I've told you guys, I don't have a whole lot of confidence in the Zags, but I do have enough confidence to, to take the money line that they win. Um, it's not a great money line, uh, but... I do like that. I do have $25. That's what we're going to be playing with this. I have a free play of $25 on BetDSI right now. So I'm just going to use the free play for the parlay. The parlay currently sitting at, I want to buy back these points. So currently sitting at $1,500 uh, if all of these win. So I'll show you guys what we're working with here. So like I said, Tennessee on the money line, Ohio State on the money line, Houston minus two against San Diego State, Michigan minus nine against Montana, Arizona minus seven against Buffalo. Florida, minus three and a half against St. Bonaventure. Villanova and Duke, these are kind of my big ones. Minus 19 and minus 21 and a half. Those are just really hard to swallow. Big, big spreads. But I think I'll end up taking them. Um, what time can they ruin my... Okay, so Duke can ruin my parlay at 2.45 Eastern. These times are all um, West Coast times. Um... So Duke can ruin this parlay at uh, 2.45 in the afternoon. Villanova, we have to wait till 6.50 in the, at night. Um, man, that's they're tough, but if I X them out, you'll see. If I X them out, it takes the parlay all the way down to $500. And uh, with a free play, I guess I'm a little bit more willing to roll just a crazy parlay. Uh, and, and, and I do like the odds. I do like... Um, I do like the buy down points, and uh, it's not an awful 21 and a half and 19. I, I, I think they can cover them. I mean, here, let's go back. We'll go back and look here. We'll go all the way back to, I guess I could have done this on the laptop and showed you guys, but we'll do it on my phone. I'll hurry up and do this real quick and and just, just run through my process, my mindset. So NCAA basketball, we'll go back to the non-conference for Nova way back in time 
against the bad teams. So like Hofstra, they beat them by 24, Temple 20. LaSalle was a close game, only a nine-point game against LaSalle. Uh, they beat St. Joe's by 41. Penn, the Penn team that's in the tournament, by 28. Northern Iowa by 14. Western Kentucky only by 8. Lafayette, they beat by, is that 47? Nichols, they beat by like 46. Columbia was 15. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not in complete love with the idea. Um, looks like they played pretty even basketball in the second half against these teams that kept it close, like Western Kentucky. Yeah, Western Kentucky just played it close. Not entirely sure what I'm going to do here with those. I mean, like in the Penn game, they blew them out in the first half. They still outscored them in the second half, but it wasn't like anything crazy. So they're... My point is, is I think Villanova's got to get up by 20 or so in the first half if they're not up. By, I guess in the St. Joe's game, they shellac St. Joe's in the second half. It's interesting. With LaSalle, LaSalle was actually leading at halftime. Okay, it's interesting. Temple, Temple, they laid it on in the first half. Yet, yeah, pretty much with this, you got to hope they lay it on in the first half. And then... Yeah, that's your that's your goal, Villanova. If you take them with that obscene spread, you have to hope that they uh, light Radford up in the first half. I guess we can look at Radford's out of conference. We can talk about that real quick uh, and see how they fared against elite teams. So, okay, so they lost to Ohio State by ten, a bad loss. Um. They lost to Vanderbilt by 12. They lost to Vir they got absolutely shellacked by Virginia Tech. What is that? Is that 20 is that 37? No, it's no, it's 27. They got 27 by they got 15 by Nevada. But I mean, they have some garbage losses on here too. They have the third they're a 13 loss team. They lost six or 12 loss team. They lost six in conference, six out of conference. Oh, all right. That's that's questionable. Well, let's take a look real quick at Duke. I'll run over Duke real quick because these spreads are interesting. The high spreads. All right, Duke. How'd you? What'd you do to the crap teams at a conference? Okay, so Elon they beat by thirty or twenty nine. Thirty against Utah Valley. Seventeen against Southern. What happened in the game against Southern? Uh, they were up 10 at half, and then they outscored them by 7 in the second half. Furman, they beat them by 29. Outscored them by 18 in the first half, 11 in the second. Portland State, they only beat by 18. Uh, Duke was down at halftime against Portland State. Let's see, what else do we got here? South Dakota, they beat by 16. St. Francis, they beat by a bajillion points. Pete Evans fell by 64. It's about the end of their non-conference. Oh. It's questionable. I mean, the... Uh, uh, mm, mm. Man, that's... It's really quite... It's quite the pricey scenario. Um, to have those guys in there. Um... Uh, that's why I wish they had the money lines for Duke and, and Nova, but there is no money lines for them. Could take the over on the Villanova. I, bet, I guess we could take, we could look at the first half. So 14 is the half in the, the first half spread for Nova. I mean, I would assume if they do this, they're going to do it in the first half. Can probably, okay, okay, it's stuck. I can't buy it down. But 14, I feel a little bit more comfortable with 14 in the first half compared to 23 in the second or like overall in the game 23 and a half or what is it bought, bought down to 21 and a half what is duke's first half spread 12 and a half kind of losing odds value but 12 and a half for duke at half hmm i think i'm gonna roll that i think i'm gonna roll that uh even though i think radford maybe could give villanova a little issues in the first half till they run out of gas 
because uh, they're coming out of the Dayton, but I think I like these spreads far more than I like um, the straight up spreads that we had. Now with this, I also have considered adding some NBA into it. There's some games I have some strong links in, so you can see right now it's 25 to win 2,000. Uh, in fourteen dollars, so let me show you here. So NBA, there's a couple of strong leans I had. So a strong lean to the pit, to the seventy sixers minus four eighty, the Rockets minus nine fifty, the Jazz minus twelve twenty five, the Nuggets minus three thirty five, and then I considered Portland, but we'll take a look with just those at it. Brings it up to thirty eight hundred dollars. And then if you throw in Portland, who's a pretty close spread lead, it gets to 5000 but I've exceeded the amount of uh, teams. So I would probably remove the Jazz, uh, which would allow me to get 5000 off of this. Uh, it would be a $5,000 parlay if it hit. Um, I'll probably end up going with the 76ers. They have to win tomorrow. Uh, the Nuggets need to win too, but the Nuggets are like tossing games into the... The Nuggets are tossing games into the trash can. Um, I know this is more of a NCAA talking about spreads, but I thought it was imperative that I like talked about how I am considering including these these games in the parlay. Um, the Clippers Rockets is 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 interesting because I think the Clippers can actually win. Like it's a feasible possibility they win, but I just I I don't think they do. But the Nuggets kind of, it's an interesting territory with the Nuggets. Um, they just have been kind of a little, a little sporadic, but it is the, it is the Pistons. Um, and then the, the, I don't have really any, I don't really have any concern with the Knicks beating the 76ers. I mean, the Knicks have been playing a little bit better. Um, but I don't think they're going to beat the 76ers. So I'll make it official. I'll add the Knicks to the parlay. Uh, so um other than or the 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 76ers um houston still needs to win i guess um i'm not sure if that really adds any value so it's 26 98 or so it's 24 39 without them 26 98 with them it's almost not even worth adding houston to that um yeah it's not even like it's not worth it to me to add them to it uh, there's some interesting games here. Like, I think the Spurs get it done against the Pelicans. I don't think Pop wants to miss the playoffs. Um, I have slight cons I, Like, I would add the Jazz, but that's gonna that, that barely ups at anything. Uh, it, it's just kind of a lot of slight tilt. I'd probably do this if I did the the Blazers. The Blazers minus 2.5 at home. It would bring it up to four grand. That's kind of insane. Bumps it up by about $1,500. If you add the Trailblazers to beat the Cavs, um, I mean, I could, like, like I assumed, like, I guess not assume. I would bet the Blazers, but I don't know if I want to lose it. Like, I could have this whole thing 100% complete and just need the Blazers to win the game tomorrow night. And if they lose, it would be the most devastatingly atrocious thing ever. Uh, and so, I would like to get, like, one more bet in here. Like, I, like, I, like, I like... I like my bets in the NBA. Like, there's nothing special in the NBA that I feel like I have to, I have to hop on. I guess I like the Hornets at minus. That's a really nice odds on the Hornets against the Hawks. The Hawks have shut down Baysmore. I just don't think they're gonna. I don't think they beat the 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 Hornets. But the Hornets have kind of shut it down as well. There's not like that great game where like the Warriors tonight against the Lakers. That was a nice little close spread. Um. Before we get off, let's take a look one more time. See if there's anything here. I do really like the Kentucky odds. You could buy Miami to a plus, to a dog. You can buy them to a half-point dog. I would just buy them to a pick -em. Um, That'd be interesting for my bracket. <laughs> Bet on Miami. So I'd be hoping... Like, I really honestly think Kentucky wins that game. But I would be so tilted because I picked Davidson in the bracket. But... The more I've researched and looked at Davidson, I think Kentucky covers the three well enough. They're one of the top defensive teams against the three-pointer. And uh, so I think they get it done. Um, so we can throw, let's throw, we'll throw Kentucky into the parlay. I'll hop off my Davidson love. Um, 
and we'll throw Kentucky into the parlay. They're a young team. It's always a bothersome for me. Um, but we'll throw Kentucky into the parlay. So we got Kentucky minus three and a half. We got the Knicks, or we got the the, the 76ers money line at minus 480. We got Duke and I. We got Duke and Iona. We got Duke's first half. We got Villanova's first half. We got Kansas winning by 12. Um, we got the Gonzaga money line, Texas Tech money line, uh, Florida against St. Bonaventure minus three and a half, Arizona against Buffalo minus seven, Michigan versus Montana minus nine, Houston San Diego minus two for Houston, uh, minus 375 for Ohio State on the money line, and minus 900 for Tennessee on the money line. Could probably get it to where you want it if you probably get it to the f full max if I take if I do this. So they would have to win by 10. Tennessee would have to win by 10. Um, so it would just be a matter of, of that. But I'm going to stick with them minus 900. Probably should take Kentucky. Where's Kentucky? Hold on. Let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. So Tennessee, they'd have to win by 10. And then if I take Kentucky money line, it would exceed the 5,000. Hmm. It's an interesting one. I think I buy I buy Kentucky down far enough that I that I'm happy with. I'm happy with this. Like I'm happy with the the minus three three and a half. Um so yeah, guys, that's going to do it. I'll update you. Obviously, you'll know if the parlay hits or not, uh, but I'll update it tomorrow. But guys, that's going to do it. I hope you all enjoyed. Drop the video like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't. Other videos to come before the tournament kicks off and then after. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.